It was. It was. Um, it's been dark pretty much since the midway point of the second season. It's, it's not hoping to play a, a lighter Oliver Queen or a more classic Oliver Queen. It's just getting to play more notes than being sad all the time. That's, it's cumbersome if you're an audience member. It's cumbersome if you're playing the character. It's cumbersome, period. So I'm just hoping that um, it's also not as interesting as Oliver going through different phases. I think it's, it's been important and critical to where we've ended up. And I hope that we get to see different sides of him. We ended literally with a ride off into the sunset. So yeah, <laughs> that was a practical shot, by the way. I mean, we like we were out there and we nailed that shot. I remember our B camera operator high fiving <laughs> nice. after that. Yeah, it's a true story. Well, uh, how long is that romance going to last? How quickly do you get back in back in the fighting? Well, I mean, the show is the show. I don't know if anyone ever watched Twenty Four, but you know, there's one season where Jack started the season in China. Everyone's like, well, when's he gonna get back? Well, he's gonna get back in episode one. So it's gonna start with him on a plane, guys, on approach. So uh, it doesn't take very long for Oliver to get back to Starling City, but whether or not that includes um, whether or not that includes him crime fighting or doing what he did before remains to be seen. What do you think the theme of the season is? It's too early to tell. You can always tell sort of by the midway point. Uh, we knew very much that it was identity going into going into season three. Don't and season two was sort of wanting to be a hero. I don't really know what it is yet going into season four, which is a good thing actually. I think that a season that takes a minute to play out is a little bit uh, re refreshing. Because in the last two years, the DC television universe has expanded rapidly. That's because it has. And how, how, how comfortably do you play in a group? I mean, me personally? <laughs> yeah, I'm fine. You know, I... I um you know, I just finished filming uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles in um, in New York, and I was very much a passenger, you know, on that on that train, as opposed to driving. And um, you know, when I get a chance to go over and and play on the Flash, or when we get over to Legends of Tomorrow, if that happens, uh, I, I really enjoy being a supporting player and supporting those shows and bringing in new elements, just as Grant does. I mean, it's 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 a refreshing it's a refreshing thing to do in the middle of a long season. Did say that uh, Legends of Tomorrow will uh, in Arrow will kind of interact. Um, yeah, of, yeah, of, co of course. Yeah, yeah. Any, uh, any thoughts on that? What are, what are your feelings about it? It's too far down the road. I mean, I know that what we are going to do in the first part of the season is hopefully uh, build a lot of those characters out from both Arrow and Flash. Um, you know, I know that obviously. Katie Lotz is our property, so to speak, and <coughs> and so is Brandon Routh. But you know there are other characters on Legends, Firestorm, and Captain Cold, and Heat Wave, and God knows where Hawkgirl and Rip Hunter come from. So that'll be interesting to see. But once they're a fully established world, that'll be that'll be interesting because their show is so different in concept from ours or even Flash's. Fans are pretty mixed on the. Um, I think that you know we we basically took almost the better part of two seasons teasing a relationship. So if you don't explore it, it's like you're ripping off the audience. Whether or not it lasts <laughs> remains to be seen. Never, never. Um, I read the comics very sparingly, and I, I just, I just trust in the character that we've built. Um, I play an Oliver Queen with his own idiosyncrasies. Um, you know. Ben Affleck's not going to do an impersonation of Christian Bale, and Henry Cavill didn't do an impersonation of Christopher Reeves, and Jared Leto's not going to do an impersonation of Heath Ledger, and Heath didn't do an impersonation of Jack Nicholson. So, um, you get in, you get on the ground, you get 69 episodes into a series, my arrow is my arrow. 
So the comics arrow is the comics arrow. The fact that he now in the comics looks like me is just cool. But they can continue to write him however they want. Very much strained. I mean, there's there's um, there's certain things that you know there's certain things that you can do that upset someone, and then there are certain lines that you cross that you can never come back from. I mean, we see that in real life, and we see that uh, this season with Oliver and uh, and Diggle's relationship. Will it ever be the same? I I don't know. I mean, even if they get back to 99% of where they were, there's always going to be that one inkling in the back of his head that this is what Oliver did. Well, I mean, of course he wants to. I don't think he's asking for forgiveness, but he, I, I'm sure that if they are going to work together again, he'd like them to be able to trust one another. Season two into season three, we got an idea of where Oliver's flashback journey was going, but three to four, we didn't really see any sort of dramatic setup. Where is Oliver at in his journey to becoming Arrow? No comment. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, we the where the uh, where the flashbacks take place this year is a is a plot point that should remain secret. Nope. Well, we haven't filmed anything yet, so we don't have a trailer to show anybody. But I, I actually think that it would play well. It would play well to let the audience discover that in October when everyone else does. Did you have to? No. Did you have to train for any new skill sets for this season specifically? Uh, no. If they need Oliver to fight with a hockey stick or baseball bats, uh, I'm good. I'm set for that. But no. Um, Oliver is, uh, if he's getting back into crime fighting, he's coming back with the same repertoire. Of course, he's definitely a better swordsman now, so that's a new skill. But no, he hasn't. He certainly hasn't learned anything over the five months that the show has been away. You're going to get me in trouble with this question because <laughs> I would reveal nothing. And I mean nothing, 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 nothing. I remember when the uh, tra a trailer for the premiere came out and it had Emily and I kissing in it. And I was like, what the fuck is this? I was like, why, why would you show this? So I live in a different world. I'm not, I'm not in that field. I would just tell you that if I ran a show, okay, by the way, our ratings went up last year, right? And the CW's ratings progressively since 2012 have gone up. So whatever they're doing, they're doing it right. But me personally, I, I'd go the Matt Weiner route and literally show nothing. Like I wouldn't, I mean, when he did, when he did uh, preview clips for new episodes of Mad Men, people would be like, why even show these? This clearly has nothing to do with anything. I wouldn't even show anything. I'd show a poster and a date. <laughs> and that would be, and maybe, maybe one trailer, but it would be a teasery trailer and not like a trailer trailer with all the plot points in it. Thanks, Steve. Thank you very much. Good last question right there. Thanks very much, guys. From leaping tall builders to going off like gamma bombs. Switch your internet browser to comicsonline.com.